you know, one of the biggest problems in the world today is the destruction of culture. Okay, and especially what we call the global monoculture, which is leveling all culture. And that's a real big problem. And if we don't stop it, it will leave us with nothing. Um, I went to China the first time in 2002. We had an incredible trip. It gets worse every time, by the way. And the first time, they were really nice to us. Times after that, they're not so nice to us. I've been there three times. Okay, And, um, you know, so the second time I went was 2010. And, you know, I left Chicago in the Chicago airport. Um, I saw some boy there wearing a silly t-shirt, like, do it, or something like that. And he had, you know, the jeans that are poor pants jeans. He pays a fortune for them, but he wants to show that he's actually poor. You know, you maybe you've got on those jeans. I don't want to offend you, but isn't that strange that you buy something that's ready for the garbage? <laughs> to show that even though you are rich, you're really not. Because no poor person could buy that, and they wouldn't. You know, they want to have jeans that work, right? And you know, so and I came into Beijing, and there was a Chinese boy with the same pants and the same shirt. So that's global monoculture, and it's a great leveler. So what do we do about that? You know, I say this is the greatest opportunity we've ever had because we create culture. And like here in my country and your country, you know, I know we could create cultures that are so beautiful you wouldn't believe it. Taking from the African Americans and the Africans, taking from the First Nations, you know, taking from the Indians and the Pakistanis and the Arabs, taking from the whites and the Latinos, right? Going back into history. You can do whatever you want because basically the culture is either going or gone. Okay? But you want to have something that resonates with the people. And this is also very important. Have you ever looked at Shaker architecture? Do you know who the Shakers were? If you read my book, A Muslim in Victorian America, you'll learn about all this. Because Webb lived in the age of the Shakers. They were the biggest religious movement of the 19th century. And look at Shaker architecture. You know, um, it's really simple. Because that's their principle, is absolute simplicity. And I think you'll find that it's beautiful. Really beautiful. Now, that doesn't mean that everybody wants a Shaker staircase, which winds, by the way. And you have two. You have one for women, one for men, because they didn't mix men and women. But the Shakers um, made really beautiful things. And again, for them, always simplicity. So if we were to do something that were Shaker-like, most white Americans wouldn't know it was Shaker, but they will be affected by it, because it's in their DNA. And that's really, really important. You see, like, for example, this turban, okay? Um, you know, why did certain people put on turbans when they went to Afghanistan who were never wearing them before? And I actually know what they used to wear. They would never be caught dead with this, because this meant Sufi. But when they go into Afghanistan, they put on their turbans. And that's because the turban means something to you, whether you know it or not. And what does it mean? Justice. And again, it's like, you know, maybe you don't feel that, but this is deep in our Muslim culture. Because we are people who did not care so much about liberty, which is a difficult concept, but we cared about justice. And who were the people who defended justice? They were the great sheikhs and the great alims, like Sheikh Ahmed Sirhindi, who dressed somewhat like this. So, deep in our DNA in the Muslim world, we identify the turban, especially on the head of a man we think to be a mujahid, or a good person, with justice. Especially the common people, they do. You see, so that's what they wanted. That's what they wanted. And, you know, but what I just want to point out is that, you see, you have cultural responses that you don't know why you have that response, but it's in your DNA. And it's in your broad cultural background. 
you know, as a Pakistani or an Indian or an Arab or whatever, maybe African American. Okay, so the thing is, we have to be culture creators. And like, wow, could you ask for a better thing to do? You know, like, get the best architects, get the best artists. You know, and we, we have tailors in this country. We have a tailor in Chicago, you know, who is first rate, no question about it. You know, and, um, you know, mashallah. Well, I saw our beloved brother, Usama Khanan, let's make a dua for him, Al Fatiha. I saw Brother Usama not long before I came to Southern California. He was wearing the most beautiful blue suit. You wouldn't believe it. And, you know, it's identified with us and with them. The fabric was spectacular. And this is our, this is our brother who is a first-rate tailor. And he imitates bird colors. And he does other things. He, he's smart. Okay, he's created, and um, you know, so that's what we want to do. You know, make beautiful clothes. You know, that are really respectable clothes, and your clothes are beautiful and they are respectable. But we can always do better. You see, and especially if you can get something that fits in, that rings a bell. You know, my mother would go to church in the 1950s. You know, I go back a long way. Veiled. Did you know that? And all the other women in church were veiled. Did you know that? And they wear these big, beautiful hats. And they have a white veil over their face. In a funeral, she'd wear a black veil. That's what they did. Now, I'm not going to, I'm not saying you should wear that. But the thing is, is that, you know, you might wear a hat even. It is possible, and I'm not telling you to take off what you've got, but sometimes hats are really cool, and sometimes you can wear an under scarf. But you know, it's like you can innovate, you can look for something, and for us brothers, hats are the big problem. And then I like your hat, I wear a hat like that too, you know, but like I'd like to have a really beautiful hat that looks really cool, you know, that can be identified as us. You know, but then also fits in. So I actually asked this tailor, can you help us? And he's working on it. You know, architects say there's no problem you can't solve. And tailors say the same thing. You know, and, and you know, so we need tailors.